to our sports chat tonight. Week 15 uh, recap. So if you guys didn't catch the Thursday night game this last week, Chargers, Raiders, um, Chargers ended up pulling out an overtime. Um, and it was a really good game, uh, surprisingly. I mean, with, with a team that was uh, eliminated from the playoffs and a... Um, uh, a team fighting for its playoff lives that couldn't pull it off, obviously. Um, sorry, I didn't go to overtime. What was I'm thinking of a different game. Um, Justin Herbert dove in for the game-winning touchdown at the end of the game. And uh, he threw for another 700 yards, which is a rookie record, I would think. 300 yards. Did I say 700? 300 yards, which is a rookie record for uh, most 300-yard games in a rookie season, which I believe was seven. Um, so Justin Herbert's been setting records left and right this year, and, and you know, rightfully so. As soon as he started playing, he you know, they were airing it out quite a bit, despite Anthony Lynn's best efforts at, at submarining the team so he could put um, Tyrod Taylor back in. And I don't believe that um, – I don't believe Anthony, Anthony Lynn's going to be back next season. Um, it, I just, it, I think it would be a bad thing on Herbert's career if he, if Lynn was back. Uh, Raiders had an okay game. Josh, uh, Jacobs looked pretty good. Um, Waller went off. He had a big game. Uh, I think he's becoming one of the better tight ends in the NFL, which would make sense because he's a converted, uh, converted, um, wide receiver. So. And then we had, for the first time in a long time, double header on Saturday of NFL games. Uh, Bills Broncos started off, and that was an absolutely absolute drubbing. Um, the Bills didn't even have to throw the ball five thousand times to to put up forty eight points. I want to say Josh Allen didn't even hit three hundred yards passing, and I think he only threw for one touchdown. But it, they forty eight to nineteen. Um, run game was was going really well for the Bills, <clears throat> and the Broncos couldn't stop tripping on their own dicks so but that's been the Broncos all season uh then the the second game of that double header was Packers Panthers 24 16 and to be honest with you that score uh was a lot closer than how th than the game actually felt um Panthers kind of started to creep there at the end um Bronco or uh, uh so sorry pa uh, Packers looked really good in the first half uh and then they just seemed like they kind of pulled back in the second half, but I mean, there, at, at no point did I really feel that the Packers were going to lose that game or that they weren't in control of that game. So despite it being an eight point game at the end, it didn't, you, you didn't have this feeling that the Panthers were going to come back and win the game. It was just, it wasn't one of those feel good comeback stories. It was just kind of like, yeah, the Panthers are putting up some points. Okay. It's going to happen. Then moving into our Sunday game, starting off the morning. Well, morning for us here on the West Coast. Texans Colts, <clears throat> which um, was a, a struggle boat for Deshaun Watson. I'll tell you that much. And and when they get their head coach and GM set up, figured out, I hope they do but do right by that kid because watching him get obliterated behind a very bad offensive line, watching his receivers drop passes, not run the right routes, um, watching that defense just get manhandled. Uh, the Colts looked fantastic. Jonathan Taylor is really good, and I expect him to run really well against teams like the Texans. Um, and, and, and Colts are playoff bound. I don't see any... I don't see any way that they're going to get eliminated unless they shit the bed this weekend versus Pittsburgh and then lose in Week 17 as well. I just don't see it happening. But any, either way, 27-20, to 20, another one of those games that it didn't feel like the Texans were really in the game to be a one-score game. Um, the, the Colts had it, plain and simple. <laughs> yeah, I know, Jesus. We'll, we'll get to that. Trust me, we'll get to that. Uh, Jets Rams, uh, the shocker of the weekend. Uh, a winless Jets team took down the at the time NFC West leading Rams. 
yeah, it just it didn't look good. I mean, the Jets looked like they were actually trying to win a game, and they did, and they lost the number one overall pick. But in reality, does it really matter? Were they really going to draft Trevor Lawrence? You know? Um, Rams looked beatable. They didn't really look like they were trying. And and I don't want to, and I don't, I hate, I hate the term trap games. Hate that term. <clears throat> and I don't necessarily think this was a trap game, but I do think that the Rams completely overlooked the Jets. And the Jets came out kind of as a statement game, you know, kind of a middle finger to Gase, kind of a middle finger to upper management, and just were kind of like, you know what? Screw you guys. We're gonna we're just gonna put in the the, the ball and effort. And we're going to lay the wood on one of these playoff contenders. And that's what they did. You know, Rams almost came back and won it towards the end. But, you know, Jets did a good job. They played well. Lions-Titans uh, was, yeah, another one of those blowouts. Um, there, there was, at no point in that game, did you think the Lions were going to win that. Uh, pretty much from the get-go. Derrick Henry ran like a madman. Uh, Ryan Tannehill was slinging the ball. His guys were catching the rock. I mean, the what, second touchdown of the game or third touchdown of the game was a 75-yarder to Corey Davis. I mean, uh, Detroit just had no answers. They couldn't stop him. It, it was brutal. Matt Stafford at times looked good and at times looked lost, which is typical Lions for the last, what, two decades? You know, he'd go out one drive. No look pass, dart touchdown, and then the next drive looked like he forgot how to play football. You know, so it was like, yeah, it, it bad game for Detroit. Uh, Bucks beat the Falcons. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. That was meh. I mean, that was Falcons. Yeah. What? Well, oh, which was funny because the Falcons were actually winning that game for most of the game. I do remember that now, because, uh, David, I remember you saying when I did my picks this weekend, and you were just like, hey, Atlanta over Tampa Bay could be one of your upsets, and I was like, ah, I don't really see that happening, Atlanta's not playing for anything, blah, 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 and then Atlanta comes out and goes up, what, 17 to nothing to start the game or something like that, or or 20 to, or was it 7, no, 17-3 or seven, something like that, and I was like, crap, oh, okay, okay, Atlanta, I see you, Atlanta. And then they fell apart. That's what Atlanta does in the second half. Uh, Ravens, Jaguars, 40-14. to 14. Uh, Ravens look back on track. We'll, 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 we'll say that. Um, they absolutely demolished the Jaguars. Um, yeah, that was brutal. That was uh, that was probably the game of, of the blowout games this weekend. That was probably the one that I felt the worst for the team that got blown out. Uh, the Jaguars just looked like a train wreck um, that got set on fire, um, and then somebody pissed the fire out. That's how bad it was. <clears throat> it, it was it was ugly. It was absolutely ugly. Uh, Dolphins took down the Patriots. Patriots knocked out of the playoffs. I'm just kidding. I don't really care that much. Um, but Dolphins look good. They look, well, um, they looked, they looked good to beat a Bill Belichick team, which they typically struggle against. So, um, yeah, Patriots eliminated. Dolphins are sitting at 9-5 holding the last spot in the playoffs right now. So they could end up as a, a playoff contender. Uh, Vikings-Bears. This was one that I had picked wrong for sure. Bears came out like they normally do and proved me wrong. When I pick against them, they win. When I pick them, they lose. And they put up 33 points. Mitch Trubisky actually looked good. No, I'm not kidding. Mitch Trubisky looked good. I want you all to sit there and say that to yourselves. Look in the mirror tonight when you're getting ready to go to bed. Wake up in the morning and say to yourself, looking in the mirror, Mitch Trubisky looked good. Yep, I said that. Mitch Trubisky looked good. Put up 33 points. And then their defense, which, you know, had been not playing the greatest the last number of weeks, 
it gave up 27 points. But as long as you don't allow them to beat your, your offense to score, you'll win games. Simple as that. Your offense puts up points. Your defense has less pressure on them. Shocking how that works. Huh, Pittsburgh Steelers. The Browns, um, 10 wins. Took down the Giants, 20-6, to six, in a game that you could tell the Giants were not up to playing this game. Um, I said it during the game that the, the Giants looked absolutely trash. Um, their game plan was horrible. Poor play calling. They left nine points off the board by electing to not kick field goals. Nine points. That score would have been 15 to 20 and they would have been a fi- it would have been a five point game on the in the fourth quarter when they were going for it where they could have just scored one touchdown instead of having to try to rush down and score two touchdowns to try to tie it. That's how inept that team is. That was so bad. Their their leading running back, Wayne Gallman, was not getting the ball on normal running downs that he had been over the last three weeks. Their most efficient running back. And instead, they put him in on fourth and one and run the ball when everybody knew that's what was going to happen and what hole it was going in. Their defense, the, the defense of the Browns, called it before he even got the ball and pointed to the hole he was going to. The entire universe knew where the Giants were going to run and who was going to run it. (sighs) Giants deserve to lose that game. Giants don't deserve to be in the consideration for the NFC Least Championship. Washington is, is still a game up. Giants. Unreal. Seahawks and, and Washington. That was one that I was I was certain that Washington or that uh, Seattle was going to actually going into the fourth quarter. Russ made a couple passes, and I thought for sure it was going to be all of a sudden go from being a, a you know what a twenty to nine game to being you know thirty to nine and just be an absolute blowout. And then it was like all of a sudden passes weren't completing they weren't running the ball right it just it was like Seattle just kind of stopped with what was starting to work and what typically works for Russell Wilson in the fourth quarter Russell Wilson typically takes over a game in the fourth quarter I've seen this happen time and time again he knows where to drop dimes and his receivers catch balls but what he typically can do to teams to kill somebody in the fourth quarter when the Seahawks hold a lead is his legs and picking up first downs, and then some. He's dangerous with his legs. And here I'm sitting there going, oh, here comes Russ. Here comes Russ. All right. And again, I picked Washington, so of course Washington, though, was going to make me look bad because uh, this was that was my upset that I had picked. But I'm like going, Russ about to cook. Russ going to cook. Here comes Russ's cooking. <laughs> Get your fork and knife ready. Russ going to cook. And then he doesn't cook. No running. Receivers drop balls. Bad bad play calling. And they get stymied. And all of a sudden, Washington starts chipping away that lead. And I'm going, holy crap. There's two minutes left in the game. Washington's down five points. Defense stepped it up. There you have it. Seattle wins 20-5. But, again, like I said, I thought this was going to be a blowout there in the fourth quarter. And I'm kind of bummed I didn't get to see it. But Seattle wins. Seattle takes first place in the NFC West now because of the Rams' loss to the Jets. So Seattle holds their fate in their own hands. They play the Rams this season yet to end the season. And the winner of that game, provided they both win this week, winner of that game wins the division. Simple as that. 
Uh, we got Eagles Cardinals. This game ended up being fan friggin' tastic. Um, after Jalen Hurts came and started against the Saints and beat the Saints and looked good. I mean, he didn't look superhuman, but he looked good. I was thinking, okay, they're going to open the playbook maybe a little bit for him. And they did. And damn. Damn. Jalen Hurts looked good. That man can run. That man can throw. That man can read defenses. And he looked good. I thought Eagles were going to pull that off. And I thought they were going to also so they could stay in uh, competition for the division. But Kyler Murray just looked really good. And DeAndre Hopkins played really good. And that's what happens when you're playing somebody who's also fighting for a playoff spot. And a former NFL Rookie of the Year, Kyler Murray. But Cardinals won that game uh, 33-26 to stay in a potential spot for the playoffs as well, now sitting at 8-6. and six. Chief Saints. Um, Chiefs won 32-29. Uh, I, I kind of expected it. Number one, I thought that the Saints had an opportunity. Drew Brees looked human, and I get it. Cracked ribs, broken ribs, multiple. What, he had 10? Uh, punctured lung. I get it. The guy's human. First game back. Um, but he was missing a lot of throws to start that game, and that's really what killed him. If they hadn't started slow like they did, I fully believe that they could have beat the Chiefs in that game. Chiefs just played a more complete game. Chiefs looked slow for a while there, too. And by no means was that necessarily Patrick Mahomes... I think part of it was they kind of got lackadaisical at points. Um, but Chiefs are clearly in the driver's seat in the AFC. I really only think that there's one team that's going to be able to take them down in the AFC. That's going to be Buffalo. Provided Buffalo plays a complete game, which we've seen them not play complete games. But then again, we've seen the Chiefs play not complete games either. You know, they do have one loss. Yes, it was against the Raiders. And they almost lost to the Raiders again. And they almost lost to the Chiefs again because they got complacent at one point. Did I say Chiefs? Saints, sorry. Chiefs almost lost to the Saints. They've had a couple games where they almost lost because they got complacent. And it happens. It happens to all teams. Not every team is going to play four quarters and dominate from opening kickoff to closing whistle. It happens. Um, but I do think right now, in the playoffs, in the AFC, best team suited to defeat them is going to end up being the Bills. Um, a game that didn't mean jack squat to NFL standings and more meant to uh, draft um, draft standings. Niners Cowboys. That was the Sunday night game, and it was no, that wasn't the Sunday night game. What am I? What am I saying? That was the Sunday afternoon game. Why is it listed as the night game on here? Anyway, um, that was. Uh, it was a high-scoring slugfest. But, you know, Tony Pollard looked really good. Uh, Dallas has now won six of the last seven against San Francisco. But, it, like I said, it meant nothing in the standings. It meant nothing in, in the playoffs. So it was it was literally fighting for draft position at this point. And the 49ers didn't look very good. That, gr granted, they're down to their third-string quarterback now. Which, by the way... In case you guys didn't hear the news today, Josh Rosen was just signed off of the Bucks practice squad to the 49ers. Uh, C.J. Bethard is going to get the start this next week, and Josh Rosen is going to be the backup. So we could see Kyle Shanahan open the door for Josh Rosen next week. Not Probably not this week, but next week. So, um... We could see a Josh Rosen emergence. Could happen. Um, and then the Monday night game, last night's game, um, another team that shat the bed. Uh, in a week where he already had the Jets taken down the Rams, we had the Steelers 
lose to the Bengals? Because why not? The Steelers have already lost two in a row, so why not not fix your problems, not panic after losing two straight, and throw the Bengals a bone? Yeah, why not? Why not, instead of closing out the season and winning the division and not having to play in Week 17 play your starters in Week 17 against the Browns where you're still fighting for the division, why not make it harder? Why not put more stress on the players? Yeah, let's 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 give Cleveland a, a sense this sense of hope. Let's not let our guys rest because we had to have our bye week put in week four and we didn't get our bye week in week nine like it was supposed to be. Let's not try. Let's have our offense be absolutely atrocious for three and a half quarters of the game. And let's lose to our division rival Cincinnati Bengals in prime time of all places. And let's let a third string quarterback run wild on our, on our on our top two defense. Give me a freaking break. Pittsburgh's got uh, got issues right now, and they are they're not going to fix themselves. Number one. Um. Their offense is, an, is a nightmare right now. They don't have defense problems. The defensive problems that they have right now is the fact that their defense is gassed by the third quarter because they're on the field for 80% of the first half. The Steelers had five possessions in the first quarter last night. Five possessions. Zero points. Five freaking possessions. Three and out, three and out, fumble in the first play, three and out, Interception. Yeah. Not okay. Not okay. So, is it the play calling? Maybe. They were running good last night. They put up 100 rushing yards last night. That was the problem. Were receivers dropping balls? No. I think there was one drop last night. Ben had a problem last night. That's for damn sure. Now, is the problem that Ben has no trust in his receivers over the last four weeks because of how many dropped passes? They now lead the league in dropped passes on the season, and the next closest team has eight less. I got to fix that. And I said this on in a tweet uh, before the game started when somebody says, we better blow them out. Meaning they better blow, the Steelers better blow Cincy out. My response to that was, they either have to blow them out by 28 points, or they better lose that game. Because if they don't blow them out by 28 points, that tells me that nothing has been fixed. Losing to um, Washington didn't fix anything. Losing to the Bills, the now the number two team in the AFC, didn't fix anything. Maybe now losing to the fifth worst defense in the NFL, maybe that'll shine a light on it. Fix it. Anyway, Steelers have a chance to win the division against Indy this week. I don't know if that's going to happen. <clears throat> uh, any word on Clyde Edwards, L. Air? Uh, I heard that he's going to be out at least until the playoffs. Uh, he may have a shot at returning for the playoffs, um, but it'll probably be maybe second round, which they have a first round bye anyway, so that could actually play in his favor. Um, but, I mean, they've got Bell anyway, so they should be fine. Yeah, Dunlap and Adams were huge pickups for the Seahawks this year, especially... Dunlap, um, after the uh, right before the trade deadline with Cincy, uh, he's definitely made his mark on the team. Jamal Adams, obviously, since day one, um, you know, unfortunately, he missed what three games because he was hurt. Yeah, Seattle defense is playing a lot better right now. <clears throat> uh, trade James Washington to a team. Uh, uh, excuse me. Trade James Washington to a team that wants to use him. Yes, the problem with James Washington last night was that he was getting chippy with the, with the cornerback from uh, Cincinnati, was playing head games with him, and he let it get to him. 
And that's why, I mean, you could see it on his face. You could see it in the way he was running. You could see it in the way he was walking to the sidelines, back to the huddle. They were, they, they got into it early, and he never recovered mentally. Deontay looked good last night. He wasn't dropping passes. Eric Ebron got hurt, so he wasn't dropping passes. Vance McDonald, I, I still believe Vance McDonald's the better tight end between the two of them, and he really needs to be factored into that game plan more. He's a better run blocker, and he's I personally believe he's a better pure pass catcher than Eric Ebron. <clears throat> Uh, could this be the resurgence for Mitch Trubisky? I do believe that could be the case, Taylor. Um, it wouldn't shock me one bit. Sometimes a quarterback getting benched is exactly what he needed. This could be that case. <clears throat> 